All right, what's going on, guys? We're here at uh, Dessa, Pittsburgh, loading up a CarMax load, which I will say I've done a few of these so far. I absolutely love this auction. Uh, for the simple reason, here's my truck. There's the cars. Truck, cars. Normally, it's truck, and then walk way down there at these auctions to get your cars. So I'm gonna say right now, I absolutely love coming to this auction, but the load I have today is two 1500s, a Cadillac XT5, um, a Sonic, a Mazda CX-5, a, uh, what else was there? Two Traverses and a Honda Civic. So a nine car load. And this is my plan for loading it. This is what I have worked out in my head. If you guys think you would have done it differently, leave a comment below, let me know how you would have done it. But this is my plan. I am going to go, Grand, oh, I, and I got a Grand Caravan. I'm gonna go Grand Caravan and number one, a 1500 over the uh, Civic, Traverse, Mazda, CX-5, Traverse, the other 1500, the Sonic, and the Cadillac XT5. I'm pretty sure that'll work, um, weight-wise and everything. The only thing I'd be a little worried about is putting a little too much weight on the, uh, go this way, putting a little too much weight on the drive axle because of having the 1500 on spot number seven and the 1500 on spot number two. But I think um, putting the Cadillac and Traverse on the back of the trailer is going to help lift a little bit of the weight off the tongue. We will find out. We're going to have to uh, scale it just to make sure so we don't get any tickets. But I'm pretty sure that's how this load's going to work. So uh, let's walk over here, go find our cars, and uh, let's get loaded up quick. All right, so I just found all my cars. I got two left. Um, I'm going to grab the red Grand Caravan right here. And this Cadillac and that Traverse, this is why I always go and look for all my cars before um, I start loading. Just because I now know these two need to be jumped. So what I will do, I will make sure that both of them are loaded in a direction where when walking up the trailer, walking up to them, they're both facing towards me. Just makes it easier to jumpstart them uh, as you're going. So that way you're not trying to, uh, it makes it easier to jumpstart them when, uh, when you're offloading. That way you're not trying to straddle a little tiny bit of the deck in order to stand there and put your jump box on it. I now know I can just stand flat footed on the deck because there's plenty of trailer or ground on the other side where both of those I can jump off. So just a little, uh, little tip right there. I'm gonna grab this last uh, caravan and go grab my jump box, jump those two. I gotta take them. Um, um, I don't know if you can see, but there's a little guard house right down in this area. I gotta take them down there and get them checked out. Um, and then I will start loading them all up. But there's, there's my load right there, plus the caravan and the two that I gotta jump. So. Let's go get these all out of here and uh, keep going here. I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, so while hauling cars out here, um, I will say there are days that things happen and you get a surprise. Uh, a surprise vehicle that you're hauling. The vehicle isn't what it's supposed to be, wasn't the way it was listed. Um, let's say like uh, this Mazda, uh was it cx5 um you're you're expecting to go to the auction and pick up a standard mazda cx5 you show up and it's got damage it, it's a total unit it's an in-op something like that or you're picking up a, a 1500 like i am right here and you're surprised because it's got a six inch lift and big 44 inch motor tires on it Today's one of those days for me, but instead of the normal crummy surprise like you'd normally get, um, it's a good surprise. This Dodge right here, I was expecting it 
to be like this Dodge back here. Your normal short bed, four door, kind of 1500. Nope. This is a short bed, single cab. Makes it a lot shorter uh, lengthwise. Makes it a lot easier to get loaded. My thought was this. I mean, it's not changing much other than now that this truck is a lot lighter and shorter in length makes it so putting it on the back of my head rack here um it's gonna go on a lot easier first off because it's just shorter in length but i'm less worried about being over on my drive axles because this truck is uh, i want to say probably around uh we'll say five to eight hundred pounds lighter than that one back there so every now and then you get a good surprise today's one of them let's get this one loaded up all right, so before I continue strapping this down, I'm gonna show you how much shorter this is and why I said it was a pleasant surprise. Normally, these trucks, these 1500s with the short box and the four door, normally I flip these forward and I park the tire on the, when this is flipped over, about right here. Cause I don't have enough space to put the strap in right here. I usually just run it up and over, over the tire, strap it down. Back here, I'm usually parked right on this blue platform on the back so now this time because it's so much short that's why i said it's a pleasant surprise this flopper isn't flipped up at all i do just like i do with suvs park on this blue platform and i'm actually i expected to be on the blue platform with the back tire but i'm actually right off of it onto the flopper right here so or the flipper so that's why I said it's a very pleasant surprise having such a short pickup truck when I expected just a standard two pickup truck load and I was going to be real close between my uh, minivan and the truck up here and just, just the normal. So yeah. All right. So this is what I was saying about uh, being able to, uh, when having to jump vehicles that are dead, if you know you had to jump them at the auction, parking them in a way that you can get to it easily. This is that traverse that I had to jump. And as you can see, I can stand right here to, uh, to jump the vehicle instead of, let's say it was the one behind my head rack underneath where I'm going to have just a little bit of the decking to stand on in order to jump the vehicle. That's why I was saying, whenever you have these vehicles that you have to jump start, park them in a way that you can get to them easily if you can. Because the next one, that Cadillac, is going to be backed on, and it'll be my very last car on the trailer underneath. So again, I can stand right on the ground, hook my jump box up, jump it off, and away I go, not having any sort of issues with having to jump the vehicle while it's in an awkward position. So just a word of advice. All right, so guys, there's the finished product. This whole load is under 13.6 because when I leave here, there's a bridge like three miles down the road that's right at 13.10. I'm pretty sure they mean exactly that it's at 13.10. So uh, got to make sure we stay nice and low. Um, I got plenty of extra room under all of this. Um, yeah, here it is. You see there's that uh, traverse that I had to jump. It's backed on right here. So that way I can just walk up the ramp or up the top deck, jump that one off. Same thing that Cadillac as the other one I had to jump. That one is uh, back down in the back. So again, I can open the door, pop the hood, jump it, drive it off. Nice and simple. Same as last time, this uh, 1500 is down in the belly under the Traverse. And actually this Traverse is my highest unit. Um, at like 13, five and a half, it's touching. Just, just touching the uh, height stick. But the rest of this is all nice and low, that pickup truck down under 13 um and i'll walk up you guys can see i got tons of space under all of this if you look under here for my uh for the accord or for the uh, civic right here um that's got plenty of space got plenty of it back here i'm gonna have no issues with my turning um over the roof of the truck it actually looks closer than it is let's go this side maybe you can see it better but i got plenty of space up there i won't have any issues with that this little car right here obviously backed in 
plenty of space back here. Up here, plenty of space over my windshield. No issues, and the cool part was this thing had a uh, roof rack on it, which I thought was gonna bite me a little bit, but as you can see, it fits perfectly under or in between those uh, two ramps. I didn't pull them out or nothing. They're just in their normal spot. It fits there perfectly. But on the same note, um, this vehicle here, I've actually it's like 13 foot flat, so I really could have raised it if I needed to, but I don't. So this is the whole load. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm gonna go get this delivered. I'm gonna get another one loaded up tonight in uh, the CarMax in Bristol. So uh, that's gotta go up to Dayton, Ohio tomorrow. So let's go get some miles done. Let's get this stuff loaded and I will see you guys later tonight on the live stream. So, or yes, I'm gonna do the live stream tonight. You guys will probably see this tomorrow. But uh, if, I, if I get it, if I have time to get it posted today, I will. If not, guys, thank you for tuning in. I'll see you on the next one. If you wanna join United Road, as always, my stuff's down below. The apps that I use to get money back and everything that I do, down below as well click on them use them it gives me a little kickback but until next time guys i love you have a good one bye